We are social creatures. Whether we are gossiping with a friend, trying to figure out how to build a bridge to cross the Agora, to cross the river, or philosophizing in the Agora, we are having conversations about the world around us and about ourselves. Conversation is the most common medium through which we communicate with each other. In this talk, I will be speaking to you about conversation. A few months ago, as I was in the cafeteria here at Quest, I overheard a conversation between two of my friends. They were arguing about whether or not some specific policy of the American government was good or bad. Being Quest students, they were both relatively educated, intelligent people, and so they clearly presented their arguments for and against, and then began evaluating and disagreeing with the other's argument. Even though they both listened to the other person, they still disagreed with the argument. They thought the other person's argument didn't work. I watched as the conversation quickly spiraled out of control. When both sides listened, neither side felt heard. They felt, so neither side felt heard. When both sides listened, they felt, so they they felt unappreciated and like the other person just wasn't understanding them. Surely, they both seemed to think, if my friend just understood what I was saying, he would see the reasoning behind my argument and agree with me. Needless to say, this conversation didn't go as either side wanted. They both felt hurt. Sadly, this is not an isolated incident. I've seen many frustrating conversations, and I've been personally involved in many more. I imagine we all have. Please raise your hand if you've ever been involved in a frustrating conversation. Yeah, pretty much everyone. It's a common problem, and it sucks. It feels like those people in the, in the cafeteria conversation felt. You feel unheard, and that if people just grasped what you were saying, they would see your reasoning and agree with you. After getting to far too many frustrating conversations, I decided we could do better. This TEDx talk is part of my effort to do better. The focus of the talk is having better conversations. Specifically, I'm going to be talking to you about conversations like the cafeteria conversation. Earnest, well-intended, truth-seeking conversations. When I say a conversation is truth-seeking, I mean it is one in which both parties are seeking to understand an issue or an idea better than they did before. Often, this takes the form of providing arguments for one side of an issue or another, and then evaluating the arguments to see what works. This is obviously different from other kinds of conversations, such as conversations that are just fun and playful, or conversations in which you're trying to blow off steam to a friend. For the purposes of this talk, I will be focusing on truth-seeking conversations. Ultimately, then, the goal of a truth-seeking conversation is for all parties to become better versed in an idea or subject, and to remain civil and in good spirits. Conversations that achieve this goal, I will loosely call good. Whereas conversations in which people get frustrated or little to no progress is made on understanding an issue, I will loosely call bad. The theme of this TEDx event is questioning the norm. If the norm is bad conversations, which unfortunately it seems to be, what can we do about it? This is clearly an important problem. Bad conversations have bad consequences. Bad conversations can lead to issues between friends, when in a discussion you don't feel heard or appreciated. Bad conversations can lead to political issues, when people on different sides of an issue are unable to come to an agreement because they lack a common ground through which to converse. And bad conversations can lead to inaction, when groups of people are unable to decide what to do. Most simply, bad truth-seeking conversations don't achieve their goal. What is the point of trying to have a truth-seeking conversation if no truth-seeking is taking place? So, the question becomes, how can we have fewer bad conversations and more good conversations? The answer I want to put to you today is logic. My thesis is that a better understanding of logic can help us have better conversations. Logic is something that is familiar to most of us in an informal, casual way, but there is an entire field of study devoted to it. Strictly speaking, logic is the study of arguments. It lets you ask and answer questions like, does this argument work? In what situations does this, does this argument fall apart? And how can I make this argument stronger? This helps clarify the intuition behind the idea that logic can help us have better conversations. Logic gives us the tool to evaluate arguments. And truth-seeking conversations rely on evaluating arguments to determine the truth of something. So, where do we go from here? I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna give two examples in this talk on how understanding simple concepts in logic can help us have better conversations. Specifically, I will look at notions of logical validity and logical soundness, and the important distinction between the two that is all too often missing in conversations. An argument is logically valid 
if and only if the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. Thus, the classic syllogism, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore, Socrates is mortal. This argument is valid, because if we agree that A, all men are mortal, and B, Socrates is a man, then we must agree that Socrates is mortal. However, the following argument is also valid. All potatoes are sentient space aliens. My left arm is a potato, therefore my left arm is a sentient space alien. <laughs> this argument is perfectly valid, because if it is indeed true that all potatoes are sentient space aliens, and my left arm is a potato, then it must be true that my left arm is a sentient space alien. This brings us to the difference between validity and soundness. An argument is logically sound if and only if it is valid and the premises are true. Thus, presumably the argument about Socrates being mortal is sound, whereas the argument about my left arm being a sentient space alien is hopefully not sound. Presumably the following arg argument is also sound. If I'm giving a TEDx talk, then I'm alive. I am giving a TEDx talk. Therefore, I am alive. Understanding validity can really help us in arguments and conversations. If both you and the person with whom you are conversing understand validity, then you can both evaluate the, conversa the arguments given forth in a conversation and agree on whether or not they are valid. If you both agree that they are valid, and yet you still disagree on the conclusion, then you disagree on the soundness of the argument. That is, you disagree on the, prim on the premises. An important kind of premise is a primitive. A primitive is a very low level kind of starting point. It is something that one simply takes as given without providing any kind of account for it. For example, some people think that happiness is good, and that a world with more happiness is just a better world. If they just state this without providing any kind of argument for or against, then this is one of their primitives. So, if we understand primitives, then we can dig deeper in conversations and find the difference between our primitives and those of others and we can actually understand where the real crux of the argument, and thus of the conversation, lies. This is what the diagram shows. Though both arguments in a conversation may be valid, if people have different premises to which they are committed, then they can still reasonably disagree on the conclusions. I suspect that what happened in the cafeteria conversation I introduced earlier was something like this. Though both of the arguments put forward by the parties were more or less valid, they each had different premises to which they were committed, and thus they disagreed on the conclusion. But because they disagreed on the conclusion, they thought that they disagreed about whether or not their arguments worked. However, if we replace the informal notion of whether or not an argument works with the more formal notions of validity and soundness, we can see the, con uh, the confusion. If my friends had been better versed in logic, and they had applied their knowledge in the situation, they would have found that even though they both had valid arguments, they did have different primitives to which they were committed. They disagreed on the purpose of a government. Thus, when they were disagreeing about whether or not the specific American policy was good or bad, they were really disagreeing about whether or not the policy fulfilled the purpose of a government. And because they had different ideas about what that was, they disagreed on the conclusion. So, we've seen at least three cases where a better understanding of logic can help us have better situation, uh, conversations. First, understanding notions of validity and soundness can help us understand the other party's perspective. Second, if we dig deep and we figure out that we have the same primitives, then we should agree on the conclusion. And third, if we dig deep and find we have different primitives, then we'll at least understand why we disagree, and we won't be talking past each other. So, we've seen how a basic understanding of just two of the concepts of logic can really help us have better conversations. Logic can help us have better personal conversations, because when you disagree with a friend, you can actually dig deep and figure out what their primitives are, and thus understand them better. Understanding primitives can help us have better political conversations. Because when you are arguing with someone of a different political slant, you can actually find what the different primitives are and stop pack talking past each other, but actually engage with the other person. Finally, this can lead to having better plans of action. Because when you understand the values of different parties in a conversation, then you're able to effectively create plans that help achieve common goals. So, I've given you my arguments for why I think Logic will help us have better conversations. By evaluating my argument and trying to decide whether or not you agree with it, you are already engaging with logic. Logic is inescapable. So, let's say you agree with me. What actual concrete steps can you take to achieve this? 
Well, first, you can learn a little logic. Learning logic has been one of the most empowering experiences of my life. In particular, if you're curious about this, I would recommend the book, A Rulebook for Arguments by Anthony Weston. Second, you can learn not only how to recognize good arguments, but also to recognize common bad. These are often called logical fallacies, and there are plenty of resources online to help you. Finally, you can challenge yourself to start using logic explicitly in your conversations, and challenge your friends to do the same. Whether you want to have better conversations with your friends, the Quest community, or society as a whole, you have to help create a culture that values logical rigor. By raising the quality of your own conversations, you can help raise the quality of all our conversations. Furthermore, logic isn't just a powerful tool for having conversations, but it can be a powerful tool for making your arguments about things you care about more persuasive. Whether you're fighting for civil rights, promoting effective environmental legislature, or trying to convince your friend to vote for one candidate over another, would have been useful in the last election, then you can make sure that your arguments are sound, and this gives your opponents less room to attack you. So, this ends my talk. I want to say thank you, and enjoy the other speakers. And as you listen to them, think about the logic underlying their arguments, and whether or not you agree with them. Thank you.